everybody, and thank you for joining. I'm going to take you through a solo play of Tiny Epic Vikings. Okay, so we've got it all set up here uh, for the most part, and I'll finish set up, but I want to show you a couple of things first. So for starters, you're going to start on the one to three player board, and you're going to start with four favorite cards out uh, for each row, like you would in a two player game. And then the solo mat, you're going to see I have down here at the bottom left. And uh, we'll kind of get into the details of that because that's going to be a little bit of a unique setup. And then you're also going to see on the board here that the solo enemy actually starts with control of an island right off the bat. So let's take a look at uh, what we got for the favor cards and what gods are up against. Okay, and we'll go ahead and assign the fury tokens. Okay. So let's go down and zoom in a little bit closer to this solo mat. Now there are going to be four different uh, solo enemy clans. They're on the back sides of these clan mats. Uh, each uh, different clan has different unique abilities and special things that they'll be doing. We'll start with the top right. You're going to see the uh, Yilfing clan has a sail plus two. So anytime they sail, they're going to add two to the movement. Uh, for that and then you'll see there's three special actions each associated with a certain rune type so those will come into play when the solo uh, sends one of their vikings to valhalla then based on what that rune is for that viking they'll trigger one of these bonuses also there's uh, certain times where the solo vikings will trigger uh, like the bonus actions on their clan leader card uh, and if it's not one of like the four main core actions you'll refer to this and do one of these actions and then below that, you see we have three resource tracks, uh, starting here with food, wood, and steel. Now, each uh, Viking clan has a different order in which uh, these tracks are presented because they kind of favor uh, different resources, and which will cause them to kind of behave differently in the game. This particular clan, the Yulfing clan, uh, d builds a lot of temples and uh the combat, which is kind of at the bottom, the battle one, that's maybe what they're kind of doing the least. But you'll see that as it plays out. Um, and again, each clan is going to be different. Now, when the resource hits a certain spot on the track, it's going to trigger a special action as well. And that's what those icons are. And as we kind of reach those, I'll, I'll explain what they do. Uh, so to set them up, they start with two resources of each type. And then you'll set up their clan mat here as shown. You'll take two player colors and you'll use the components for both the player colors and you'll set it up just like this so they're stacked. So you got the uh, one color underneath and then you stack it up like that. So it's just double decker in a sense. They get twice as many uh, units to, to deal with. Okay, so once you got it all set up like that, you're pretty much ready to go. Um, up here, you'll see that I've already given the solo enemy an island. Now this one is randomly determined. It'll always be one of these three central islands. Uh, and you'll take the runes, shuffle them around in your hand, drop one out, and then that will be the island that, that they get to start off with. So you'll choose where their boat goes. Um, you'll see I have got this boat kind of standing up. It looks a little bit strange, but just ignore that. Um, so that's because that's their primary boat. That's going to be the boat that every time they sail, that's the boat they use. And then additional boats that they bring into play will be laying down, more like you see my boat here. Uh, those boats won't be sailing They'll just mainly be there to offer influence to that island for the solo enemy to try and control that island. Uh, so in addition to the boat and what dock you place it on is just your choice. Uh, once the island's been determined, you can place it on any of the docks that are not the village dock. And I just chose this one. Um, and then you place two settlers on that island. So naturally they control that island. They'll take the sea rune right off the bat and the sea, uh, the fury for Freya, who is our uh, god associated with the sea rune in this game, she will get uh, her fury increased by one right off the bat. Okay, so now you're ready to rock and roll, um, and we're gonna start off with the draft. Now, obviously that's gonna be a little bit different in solo play. So for the drafting, you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a stack of three cards, uh, and you're gonna create a number of stacks that's equal to the amount of cards you would have in that round plus one. So in the first round, as shown here on the arrow mat, you're gonna have four cards that you're gonna be drafting. So you're gonna to wanna to set up five stacks of three cards. Uh, and then again, that will increase by one each round. So we're gonna go ahead and get that set up. And uh, bear with me as I build that out and then we'll go into the draft. Okay, so then you're going to go ahead and 
pull three out, and this is what you're going to draft your first card from is the first stack here. Okay, so we've got a couple of strong characters, it looks like. we got a 9 and a 12 coming out, and then we also have a really good resource gathering card. So that's pretty nice, too. I do generally like to start with resources, but I also like to start with a sale. Um, and bear in mind, whatever card I, whatever two cards I don't draft here, I'm going to be sending over to the solo enemy, and that's going to be what's building the solo enemy's deck that I'm going to have to fight against each round. So I definitely, I'm not just thinking about what I want. I also have to think about how the solo enemy is going to uh, use these cards against me. Um, but I am going to take the gather, even though these ones are pretty strong. Having that gather right off the bat, I think I can, I'm hoping I can get another sale card that comes out, um, and I'm going to trust that that gathering is the right move. Okay, uh, so then we'll draw from the next three. Okay, so there's a sale, and there's also another strong card. Okay, so I think I, I want the sale really bad. If I don't get another chance for a sale, then I, I could maybe really get myself in a bad situation right off the bat. I'm not considering this one as I've already I've already picked up an equivalent in my mind. So it really is between do I want to give the solo enemy another strong card for battling or uh, or do I want to take that or do I want to just secure the fact that I can get a sale? So <clears throat> I'm going to take the sale. So I I'm just I, I need to get that sale. If I don't see another one again, it really it could be really really bad. So. Let's see here, what we got on the next setup. Oh, there's all the sales. Okay, so I probably should have taken that uh, strong card in hindsight. All right, so this one here we have uh, being able to explore and if you qualify for the bonus, you get a sale. Otherwise, a sale with an exchange of resource or a sale three, and this bonus action takes four C runes, so I really don't imagine I'll qualify for that. So it's really kind of between these two cards. Um, and I've got my sale here already but this one could give me a one as well i think i'm going to take this one for the flexibility of kind of having the mobility with my settlers and i'm going to send these ones over to the solo enemy and just kind of building up their deck that i'm going to fight against all right and then for my last uh draft okay there it is build that's what i was needing so then i will just grab that one right off the bat and i'm going to send these ones over here to the solo enemy Okay, and then the solo enemy also gets this set of three cards, and I haven't looked at this one. So there's going to be cards in this deck that I have not seen. So we'll give that a shuffle, and then I'm just going to move my four cards up here, and I'll just kind of play them from here. Uh, and then in the solo game, the human player is always the first player. So you'll just go ahead and take that token, and it, you'll always be the first player each round. That's never going to change. Okay, so with that said, let's, uh, let's get started. All right, so right off the bat, I could maybe kind of come in and start causing some troubles on this sea island uh, and start off with a sail if I'd like. Probably a decent idea. Um, but it's a sail three, and I only have two food. And if I want to deploy three settlers on my first sail, I'm going to need more food. So I'm actually going to gather first because I'm also not too concerned with the bonus action here for this card. So I'm going to go ahead and take one food. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take uh, three wood. So that'll leave me with three food, five wood, and still my remaining two steel. That kind of puts me in a position where I could build my temple. Because if you see here, that to build your temple, your first one's going to cost five wood. Um, and once you get that temple built, every time you gather resources, you get a resource of your choice. So that can really kind of help start a bit of a resource engine for me. So I'm definitely going to play that first. Got my stuff, don't qualify for the bonus. So now we're moving on to solo. So how this works is you're gonna draw off the top of the deck and you're gonna just flip it and play. And in this case, the uh, solo enemy has a sail three and then they've got the bonus action. Or if they have an N, they would have been able to deploy a settler or move a settler, but I'll, I'll kind of explain how that works when we get there. Um, but in this case, the when they sail three, what you want to do is you take a look at the top rune there on the card, this one being a C, and the solo enemy is going to sail three, and because it's the uh, Yulf Yulfing clan, they're going to sail three plus two. So even though they're on a C island, 
they're going to want to sail to the other sea island because they're here. And they're going to sail in kind of the shortest path that they can get there and in a clockwise uh, way. So um, it looks like they'll go and they don't sail at sea. They always want to sail around the perimeter of the island. They kind of move from dock to dock uh, instead of going out to sea. So and then they also follow the dotted lines and jump from island to island. And that's kind of how they get around. So in this case, we're going to go one and then two three, four, five. Uh, so they jumped over here. They're trying to get over here to this island. And anytime they cross over these villages, they raid those villages just right off the bat. So they're gonna grab that village and this village and this village. So that really right off the bat takes those right out of, of any opportunity of me grabbing those villages. But then they play these villages immediately as well. And how that works is they'll take a look at the era mat and they'll see what uh, actions up here have not had the fewest amount of villages and they'll play that one. And if there's options on there that are tied, then they'll go from the top to bottom in order of that, whichever ones are going to be effective for them to play those. So in this case with three, they're going to hit those first three. So they're going to play the uh explore with a settler now that works a little bit different for the solo enemy um they don't move a settler that they already have on an island like the normal player would instead they deploy a settler from their uh, clan mat and you take a look at where their primary ship is located and it deploys it across the dotted line to the other island so in this case it's going to land here that's going to give them boots on the ground and area control over this island they're going to take that F rune, and that will increase the fury of the F god right off the bat. Then they're going to sail, and in this case, uh, they also, when they finished their movement here on the N uh, island, they actually would have deployed, and they would have deployed up to what they can afford. And in this case, they had two food, so they would have dropped two settlers on this island when they finished their movement, and they would have taken this rune as well. And then now they're sailing again because of that second village that they're dedicating. And in this case, because this, they're just still going off the same card. And this card is a sea, so they're still going to now work toward getting up to that sea island. They, get, they would technically go to whichever one is closest. Uh, and in this case, the one they were originally going for is closest. It's one and two away, so they'll move up here. And they'll grab this village as well. And it's a sail two. They can deploy again, but they're out of food, so they won't be dropping anyone off on this island. Uh, next, they're going to gather. They're going to gather two resources. If they had um, enough boats built to be revealing the bonus resources that are shown on the era mat when you've taken units off, then they would gain those resources as well. But in this case, they're going to gain two resources. And when they gain resources, they're going to gain it from top to bottom. Uh, in this case, they're going to gain one food and one wood. So we'll advance those. And now the wood advanced to the three. And the three is going to send that ship across the dotted line to the other island. So it's actually going to send it back over here. And then they're going to drop this village here. And they're going to build. And when they build... Uh, they're going to just take a look going left to right, and they're, they're always building uh, their ships. So the temples they'll get actually by bonus actions here on the mat when they reach four food. But boats is what they will build. It's going to cost them two wood, so we're going to deduct two wood from them, and they're going to drop a boat. And how that works is when they build it, they build the boat uh, where their primary ship is located. And so... Um, they're going to just place it here at this dock. And again, it's not going to be sailing. It's just going to stay there and offer two influence to that island and just kind of be a, a nuisance. Now, as a human player, I can come and dock at the same place where they would have uh, one of their ships laid like this, and I could knock it off. And if I displace it, it will go back to their clan mat. So that's a way that I can kind of control how many ships are gathering up on the islands. But I can't displace their main primary ship. That one will always just be attached to the island. So, okay, so that was an amazing turn. They actually also do qualify for the bonus action of this uh, card, which is going to allow them to dispatch another single unit the way that they did the first time. And that's because they picked up that end rune. 
And so they're gonna drop this single unit up over here on this island, and they're gonna pick up that C rune. So they're off to a good start, but I'm not too concerned. I know that I'll be able to come in and grab a lot of that those islands away from them. So we'll see how that pans out. Um, okay, so now it's my turn. And I've got my resources that I'm looking for, and I just probably need to come in and do some damage control. Um, I'm gonna sail three. So this card also can have the exchange resources if I grab an N rune. Not too concerned about that. So um, I'm gonna head up here to, well, I don't want Solo to take all the villages from me. I definitely wanna make sure I get some of those villages for myself. Um, I'm gonna come over here to this village and raid this village. And I'm gonna spend one steel. I'll take that village. And then I can deploy units up to three. I do have that three food, so I will drop that. And I'm gonna send three units out here to this sea island, which will eliminate one of their uh, settlers as well. And that will give me control of that island. So I'll take the sea rune from them and that will increase uh, Freya's fury. Okay, so now the second action for Solo all right, so they're sailing again, and it looks like if they have double F runes, they could qualify for uh, also battling. <clears throat> they are trying to get to the nearest sea island, which for them is just north, and it's a real simple sail. They're going to head right over there, and they are going to deploy what they can afford, which is one, so they'll drop a single food, and they're going to deploy another unit onto this uh, northern sea island up there. Uh, and they don't have double Fs, so they will not be battling. Okay, so then, moving on to me, I grabbed that sea island down here in the center, and I'm feeling pretty good about that. And being that it's a center kind of island, I think building a temple here is smart and kind of just protecting that. So I'm gonna drop five wood and I'm going to put a temple on this island and kind of secure that up and then I do not qualify for the bonus that would take an F rune and I don't have any F runes showing so uh, moving on to their action okay so solo is going to be doing a really big gather right here they've got to gather four and if they have an F rune which they do then they'll also gather food times the number of N runes that they have. That's what uh, you're seeing is that uh, bonus action at the bottom. And it looks like they have a total of two N runes. So they're really gonna be getting a lot here. So um, four food or four total. So they're gonna gain one, two, three, and four. And when they reach that spot, their food just reached the number two spot. That means they're going to build a boat. So that's another way that they get boats into play. And in this, when they build the boat like this, they're not spending wood to do that. And so in this case, we'll take this boat and we're going to drop it here. So when you're grabbing the units for the solo enemy, you go from left to right and top to bottom. Uh, and then that'll kind of open up the spaces. So now they've opened up this uh, first space for when they gather in the future. Okay, so they drop this boat where they have their primary boat. And then they um, get also the bonus action, which was uh, two food that we determined. So they're going to pick up that two food, which now um, they've hit the icon at the end of the food track at space number four, where here it says they're going to take a look at where they have units on islands. And wherever they have the most units, if they don't have a temple there, then they're going to cut their number of settlers in half, rounding down, and they're going to drop a temple on that island and then you'll see the icons right to the right where it's got the food icon and the arrow pointing to the zero. That means that their uh, food resource will then be reset to zero after they take that action. So in this case, um, the island they have the most settlers on is this island here. So they will take one unit off and they will drop a temple here. And then that's and then their food will reset to zero and then that's good for them. Okay. Now, let's see. This is the one that was kind of, I, I did kind of all the main stuff I wanted. This one was just kind of extra to see if maybe I could do something tricky with it. Um, I think I can, actually, because I got a pretty good uh, stronghold going on that sea island. I don't think I need all, all my units there anymore. 
So I'm gonna play this and this will allow me to explore one settler up to, I could go across a dotted line to any one of these connected islands. And I think I'm gonna go north um, and grab this N rune from up here. And this will increase Frigg's fury. This is the god we have associated with the N rune for this game. So I'm gonna do that as the primary action. And then as the secondary action, if I have an F rune, which I don't, I would have been able to sail twice. Wow, I'm surprised. Wow, it's like I have four end runes. That's incredible. Okay, um, so I don't qualify for that bonus. Um, all right, so moving on to Solo's final action of the turn. And okay, so they've got the deploy two settlers, and if they have three F runes, they would destroy one of my settlers, um, which actually is not a primary action. So instead, they would refer to their clan mat and do the F action on their clan map. But it's neither here nor there because they don't qualify. So they are going to deploy two settlers and they're going to deploy them across from where their primary boat is and their boat's here. So they're going to send them across to this island. So they're really starting to develop a force on this N island. Okay, and then that's it for the first round. So we'll go ahead and just discard our cards and they will also discard these cards. And then we'll begin our draft for the second round. So moving on to the second round now, uh, you're gonna draft five cards, which means you're gonna set out six piles of three cards, and then raiding villages costs two steel instead of one. So bear with me here again as I set these stacks up. Four. five and then six okay so then I will look at these first I'm just gonna move this out of my way a little bit okay so this is what I grabbed I got a explore two with a bonus of sale two um, sale three with a bonus of explore one and a sale two with the bonus of draw a new card and discard a card, which is helpful if you didn't quite get the draft you were looking for. Um, that's pretty good. I think I'm gonna pick up the sale three and I will send these two cards over to the solo enemy. All right, let's see what we got in pile number two. Okay. That's couple of good fighters and I don't have a favor card yet um, so I probably will grab one of those so we've got a 13 for three steel which is really quite a bit and maybe overkill for right now um, especially with how low my steel is or a nine and this one if I have two end runes I actually get to flip this card in battle while after taking the leader action so then you kind of get the full value of the card and I think I like that one the most right now I have a single end rune so by drafting this, I'm gonna to want to pay attention to make sure that I draft another N rune because I don't imagine I'll be taking this N island over here that they have got super fortified. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go for card number three. All right, a lot of these heavy hitters coming out early. Um, a 12, a two steel, it's a sail twice. Otherwise, I got to sail twice, and a, if I have two F runes, I gain three steel. That's really good. It's actually really good. And I think I could get these F islands. Those don't look bad at all. So I kind of like that one. And then also explore two settlers and slay one of their settlers. Hmm. I'm going to go for the sail two, and if I have two F runes, gain three steel. I like that a lot. I'll give those ones over to the solo enemy. One, two, three... Okay, builds, those are nice. Um, I have no resources and I don't have anybody giving me resources. So that's not good. And they're all builds, huh? Jeez. Um, well, I do need another F uh, to qualify for this bonus. So I'm gonna take this card. That'll be the second F. That way if I don't get those islands or something or I got caught up doing something else, I at least can qualify with my drafted cards. Okay, so let's take a look here at this pile. And there's a gather. 
And I think I have no choice but to just take that gather. Um, it also has a, a build built into it, which is kind of nice if I need it. I know I will already qualify for it because I've grabbed F cards already. This one is a sale two and a explore with a settler. So give those ones to the solo enemy. And then I'm going to give the solo enemy three cards that I've not seen. So again, they, they have stuff in here that I don't exactly know. We'll give that a little shuffle. Move my cards out of the way. And again, the first player token doesn't move in solo play, so I'll be starting this round. Okay, so let's see here. I know I'm going to want to play that later because that's the one that takes two Fs to qualify for the um, steel gain. So I want to play something that's going to be uh, that's going to be an F. I want to play that early, but I don't have any resources. I'm going to play this Viking leader here for gather two resources. Uh, of my choice plus I have built a temple so effectively it's three resources of my choice and if I want to take advantage of the build I'm probably gonna to need to pick up some wood and at the same time yeah I'm gonna do two wood and because of my temple I get one more resource and I'm gonna take that in food and I'm feeling awfully resource starved right now um, so I'm going to drop this village i'm going to dedicate this village uh to resources and i'm going to gain additional resources right now and that will also trigger my temple's uh additional resource gain as well um i don't think i need any more wood so i'm going to take two food and one steel and then that'll be my turn okay so let's see what the solo player has up their sleeve so here they have uh a deploy one uh settler and then if they had four F runes, they don't, then they would trigger that F ability. Um, and they're still over here. They haven't moved yet, so they're going to drop another settler on this island. So there's further fortifying that island. Okay, so then over to me. Um, so I could build now, and that would be an F, which is good for order of operations. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to... Build, I'm going to spend two wood and build my second boat. And I'm going to put that boat in the middle. And then I do qualify for the bonus of sail two, which is really nice. Because uh, I've got that sea rune, so I'm going to do that. And I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to come up here and take this island from the solo enemy so i can it's a sale too so i can spend up to two food to deploy two settlers which is enough to eliminate that settler from the solo enemy that'll go back to their clan mat and then they have to hand me that f rune and then that will increase njord's fury that is our god associated with the f rune for this game okay now let's see what they have planned this time okay so solo enemy is going to do a build and then if they have an f rune which i just stole from them they would uh, sail their ship but they're not going to do that so uh, they will build and they do not have uh, three wood so they actually cannot build so that ends up being just a bust for them they just cannot afford to build that boat uh, and they don't have the f rune because they stole the f rune from them so too bad, so sad. Okay, so then I think it's probably time I get a fight in. But let's see, this one needed two end runes. And I do have two end runes. So that's really perfect. So I've got one here and here. So I'm going to go ahead and play this card. That will allow me allow me to sail three. And then I, if I have a steal, which I do, I can flip this card over and fight for a favor card. Okay, so where to sail? Um, I could come down here and move over here. If I raid this village, I wouldn't have enough steel to fight. So I'm not going to raid the village, but I'm going to land there. I'm going to spend the food, dump that out, take that F rune, and increase the fury of this god by one. And then I will fight. So um, I will fight for. Uh, 
I will fight for this favor card. Well, no, I'm going to fight for this favor card because this one gives two food and one steel versus the other one was giving one food and two steel, but I think I want the food more. Um, and it's so early, I don't really know how the gods are going to shake out and who's going to have the most fury, so I'm really just kind of concentrating on the resources, and so that's the one that I'll be fighting for. Now, when I initiate a fight, the solo enemy will always fight you, um, and they just play a card off the top, and it doesn't count as their turn, so you don't have to put it in the row. And so, oh, wow. Um, okay, so they drew a 12. They have the steel. That's critical. They actually do have the steel. So they'll spend two steel, they'll win the fight, um, and they'll win two food and a steel, so they'll take a steel, that's pretty lucky for them, and they'll take two food, and that two food is going to drop a boat, um, and the boat's kind of daisy chain, where from starting at that primary um, boat here, because they're not going to drop a second boat, and they already have a boat here, and it's going to kind of go in a, in a clockwise order, so you'll follow this dotted line like their normal movement and then you'll end up here and that's where they'll put their boat and then they take that favor card and they just flip it over and now i still have to spend my steel so i'll drop my steel down um and i this is an f rune that's going to valhalla so f will increase and i get this god ability sail each of your boats up to two times if they dock at islands, they cannot raid villages, but can deploy settlers. So that's pretty good. And I do have multiple boats to take advantage of that. So that's pretty, that's okay. I don't mind that so much. Um, so, but I don't have any food to deploy anybody. And I don't have any steel to raid any villages. So maybe sailing right now is not all that advantageous. Um, I'm going to go one two and mm, one and two and i'm going to displace this boat just so that it, i don't want you know in case i kind of do find that i need to come over here i'm going to start chipping away at what the solo enemy is doing to this n island over here and then this one i moved off mainly to just get centralized just, just kind of by having that out in the open it's going to be helpful so, okay, and again, that wasn't Solo's um, action, so they still get to take an action. So they'll play this card out, and they're building again. Um, and they're, they're going to run into the same problem, where they don't have the wood necessary for that build. Uh, in this case, though, they do qualify for the bonus action, which is to gain a single steel. They do have an end rune, so that at the very least, they'll get that steel. Okay, so then for my fourth action... Um, the setup I was doing with this Viking will work out because I did collect two F runes and that's a sale twice. But again, I don't have any food. I'm like really resource starved myself because I can't raid villages either. So, hmm, maybe I fight again. Um, this character is a three times C for the cost of a single steel. I have a single steel and I have a lot of C's if I wait, like I've got three, so that'd be a nine value. That's not bad. If I wait, so I'll play this character first. Uh, actually, yeah, that, that'll be good. And then I'll pick up more steel. Hmm, okay. Um, so I'm gonna go one and two. I'm just gonna keep at kind of this chipping away. So I'm gonna come over here, knock that boat off and put that back uh, boat back on their map. And then I don't, again, I don't have any food so I can't deploy, but I do qualify for the bonus. So I'll pick up the three steel. Okay, and then their fourth action. Okay, so they're going to be sailing, and they're going to be sailing towards the N Island, and they're just right next door to it, so it's very easy for them. Uh, and then they do qualify for that bonus action, but again, that's not one of the core four actions. So instead, they're going to refer to their clan mat, and they're going to do the action that's on their clan mat. So here's how this is going to work. Okay, so they're going to just sail right over here. As soon as they reach their destination island, they're done sailing. doesn't matter how much movement they have. So they're, they're happy. They've reached their island. Uh, they will attempt to deploy, and they'll deploy as much as they can. So in this case, they will drop two food and drop two more settlers on this island. And then they will 
uh, refer to their C ability that they qualify for, and it says to add a settler to the chieftain's boat island and then uh, sail five docks clockwise towards the closest N island. Uh, and in, in, in cases where they're on an N island already, then they always target the other island. Um, so they'll throw a settler down here, and then they're going to go clockwise five spaces. So one, two, three, four, five. They're going to end up here, and they're going to take this village on their way. And then they're going to play that village. And again, they're just going to play it in uh, order to whatever has the least. And that is going to just go right to the top. Uh, and so then they're going to deploy a settler across the way. So that's going to go over here, up to the top. Sorry, that doesn't show you much. I have to zoom like this. Okay. All right. And then that is it for theirs. So um, let's see. I'm going to do that fighting that I was talking about because now I'll have a value of nine. I've got plenty of steel at this point. So I'm fighting with this card. And I'm going to fight for this favor card here. It's uh, one food, two steel with an F and N rune. And then they will just fight me off the top of the deck. Oh, they've got a three times F. And they've got one F, just a single F. Okay. Um, and they will spend that steel. And I will also spend my steel. And so I beat them. So F is going to increase by one, that's Njord. And then they're also gonna refer back to this chart and they're going to add settlers to um, their chieftain's boat's main island. They're gonna add two settlers. They have one here and then just uh, like how the players do, they'll grab settlers from other islands and they'll grab them from wherever they have the most. And obviously in this case, they have this place quite overpopulated. So they'll grab one settler from here and drop it off here. Now, I think I'm fine still, so for influence count, they have two, three, four, five. I have four, five, six, so yes. Um, actually, because of that addition of that extra settler, that uh, overpowered my settlers, and I actually lose a settler. So now we're tied five and five, but they have to beat me, not tie me, in order to take that rune, so I'm safe for now. Um, yeah, so that, uh, that resolves that. I gain this favor card. I pick up the two steel. I pick up one food, and then that card belongs to me now. Okay, and then that is up. Oh, they've got one more action. They will play their fifth action. Okay, and their fifth action is to dispatch a settler across from their main boat. And if they had four ends, they would qualify for the N. Oh, they do. One, two, three, four. So they actually do qualify for that bonus, which in this case, they'll refer to their clan card again, and they'll take the end bonus that's up there where they gain one resource of each. Um, but first, they'll deploy a settler from across their boat, and they're going to, again, take it from the most popular island here, and they're going to dump it over here. So now on the F island, we're tied. So we're tied over here on the F island, and we're tied over here on the sea island and they're starting to diminish their power over here which is not too shabby um and then from here it says that the enemy is going to gain one resource of each type so they're going to gain a food a wood a steel and this wood landed on spot three which has an icon and that icon is to move the boat across the C across the dotted line. And so in this case, the, their primary boat's gonna come across this dotted line. That will give them uh, area control of that island. So they'll actually take the F rune back from me and that will increase Njord's fury once again. Okay, that marks the end of round two. So we'll go ahead and discard these cards. And grab these ones. <clears throat> Okay, so then, and also these ones. And then we're moving into round three. So now there's six cards in a hand, which means you're gonna put out seven piles of three. So we'll start with one, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. 
three, one, two, three. That's five piles, so we'll shuffle these. And we'll do two more piles from this deck. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, now we've got all of our piles here. I'll just take from this one down here first. And we'll flip those over and see what options we got. Okay, going into round three, you definitely want to be thinking about kind of that late game hot potato grab of, of islands and stuff. You want to make sure you've secured stuff. You kind of have a little bit everywhere you want and then grab some sale actions are really strong in the end and also making sure you have the resources. In this case, I have options for a three resource with an explorer bonus, a two resource with an explorer bonus, and a... Uh, build with a uh, extra wood bonus, which is pretty interesting, but I need those resources bad So I'm definitely grabbing the one that will give me the most resources and then these cards are going to head over to the solo enemy And we're going to take out three more Wow all resources and look at this one So it's a gain two resources with the bonus of gaining another four if you have three C runes uh, which I have one this one gains a three extra food for two end runes, and this one is a build ooh, for two end runes. Okay, um, yeah, I like that. I like the build option because then I don't have to worry about drafting a build Viking per se. I'll just use the build from that one, so that's actually really strong. That gives me more freedom to pick like sailing and battling and stuff. Okay, so speaking of battling, got this strong Viking here with a explore option or a strong battle option. Three times N for battling is not bad. A sail three with a slaying of an enemy settler and a gatherer four. I have plenty of gatherers, so I don't need that. I'm going to take this battle card here and we'll flip these ones over and send that to the solo enemy. Okay, next. It all gathers everything it's all it's all gathers here at the end of the game um which we'll see it's interesting for solo gathering is actually kind of strong for the solo enemy because that will help them trigger their bonuses um and i just don't need all those gathers but i i could use probably the explore at the bottom more so than the extra wood here so in that case and this is a seven strength okay i'll grab that one and that's also an end rune, which helps me qualify for this bonus. So drafting, if I choose to use this card uh, for its actions instead of combat. So I think that's a good, good option there to draft. I'll send those over. All right, one, two, three. Let's take a look. Okay, an 11 for two steel is super strong. Um, more gather, but this one does turn into a combat card at an eight strength. Or gather and I just don't I don't care for that gather so I think I'm going to grab the stronger one probably just to protect myself from having to fight against it and I'll send those ones over and then one two three and this will be the last card that I draft um, well I got I actually wow uh, I didn't get any sale and I was just saying how important it is to get sale um, so I think I'm going to grab this one because the bonus will at least allow me to sail. Well, well, no, this one totally for sure. hundred percent this one, because this one I can sail and then, uh, go into battle. So yes, that's the obvious choice there. So I will send these over to the solo enemy. And then also this pile of three that I've not looked at goes to the solo enemy to finish off their deck for this round. Okay. So let's, uh, take a look at the state of things. Okay, um, we're kind of, for the, the central islands, the F and C were definitely neck and neck. Um, they got a good grip on this one up here in the corner, but I got these two, and they have this one. So pretty even spread there. Um, all right, let me move these cards out of my row here. Okay, so the order to play them is going to be important here. Um, because I have a couple of these uh, three N's and you kill a settler, three F's and you kill a settler. And I have a lot of N's and F's. So actually, I could totally qualify for all that if I play it right. 
Um, so I'm going to start off with the gather. This is, a, I think, a great place. It's an N. I already have an F to qualify for that. So I gained three resources, um, but I do have one boat built and one temple built. So really, I'm going to gain four resources of my choice plus a food. So I'll take the food now. And then with the four resources of my choice, I'm going to go... Mm, I'm going to go one more food for sure. And then two, three, four. Yeah, I'm going to go like that for now. And then I get to move a settler across an island somewhere if I would like to. Uh, and it's kind of interesting. I think I would like to because if I move this settler here, it will kill one of their settlers because I'm, I've got three to their uh, to their two. And now they have three strength. I have three strength. So I don't take the island yet, but I still think that's a good move. Okay. Their turn. All right. So it looks like they're going to build and then they're going to gain wood. Okay. And they do have enough wood to build. They're going to spend two of their three wood and they're going to build a boat and they're going to drop it right here where their primary boat is, <clears throat> which again, they still have that ruin, but that just strengthens that even more. And then we're going to look at their bonus action, which is if they have an end rune, they do. So it's wood times C. They have two Cs, so they're going to gain two wood back. One, two. And this card, uh, they, so they just got back to three wood, which triggers that ability again to send them across to the other island. So it's actually going to send them back across over here, which actually does. I was four to their three because I moved that uh, settler away. And now by that boat coming back, they're now five to my four, and they take my C rune. So... I know what I'm going to need to fight for now. Okay. Um, and they got that, so they're good. So my turn. Oh, and I just don't have any sail cards. That I'm going to have to, for what I lack in sailing, I'm really going to have to make up for in eliminating settlers. Uh, all right. So it's like, do I want to do it now? Hmm. Tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. I have so much resources. And like I'm, I'm going to just gain so many resources that I don't really need. Oh, this will be helpful. I've got it. I know. So three. Okay. So yes, this is the plan. I'm going to play this Viking here. This is going to allow me to uh, spend three resources or gain three resources rather. And I'm going to gain it all in wood. And then I also gain a bonus resource of my choice, which I will gain in wood. And then I gain a food, which uh, is from having a boat built. And so long as I have two end runes, I can build, and I do. So I'm going to spend seven wood, and I'm going to drop a temple here. And that will definitely give me the advantage over there. Actually, when they, yeah, because we were tied. So now by dropping that, I'm up by four. I'll take that F rune. And it's looking like Njord is clearly going to be the most furious god uh, at seven fury, whereas Frigg is at two and Freya is at four. So holding on to those Ephraims at this point is going to be a really big deal. So I take that back and that's my turn. Now we're on to theirs. I'm going to move these out of the way. Okay. So then they're going to try to build again, which they, um, they do, they have enough resources. So they're going to spend three they're going to build a boat. They're going to build it where their ship is. So it's going to come here on this island. Wow. Okay. I, that's going to be tough to get that sea back. And then they sail. Uh, do they, they do have the sea island. And when they sail, they're going to try to sail towards the nearest F island, um, which happens to be the very island we're fighting for over here. So they're going to sail up here and land at that island, they only have one food, so they will at least deploy a single unit. And now let's take a look and count. Um, I'm at four, five, six, seven. They're at two, four, five, six. So they're close, but I'm still winning that. So I, I maintain control of that island for now. All right, so now my turn, and I do need to do some fighting, and I've got plenty of steel. Um, yeah, I think it's time for a battle. So I'm going to go ahead and play this character to fight, and I'm going to fight for something 
meaningful, like uh, this is F and C. Those are the two highest uh, scoring gods right now. So that's a great card. It also gives me a food. I probably don't need the wood, but the food is fine. Um, that'll be helpful. So I'll grab that. And yeah, so they're going to fight me automatically, like I said. So they're just going to play this right off the top. They're going to flip it. Um, they drew a really weak card for their battle, so that's no problem for me. So we'll definitely win this fight. Uh, they're going to increase, yet again, Njord's Fury. And then they're also going to take the F action on their card, which is to add two settlers to the Chieftain Boat's Island. Uh, so that's going to be this island up here. And they're going to grab settlers from where they have the most, which is still down here. So they're going to take two settlers from over here, drop them up here, which will kill one of my settlers. Uh, okay. And then that will... Now, when we do an influence check, it's two, four, five, six, seven, eight to my four, uh, five, six. So yes, they now have control of this F island, uh, and then but I gain the fury or I mean the favor card. So I'm going to gain two wood, one food, and I will take that. And so that's good. Um, okay, so there, see, I'm just out of sale actions. If I could get a sale action, I could really take some of the stuff back. Okay, so they played this card that's going to be a gather three and, and then gain a whole bunch of wood if they have the ends, and they don't. They do, despite all the runes they have, they do not have two end runes. Three resources, so one two and three and they also gain an extra food because they have a, a boat revealed uh, space here so that's going to give them an extra food so they actually hit two differences here the first bonus is that they hit number four on the battle track which is going to um, get them that uh, an immediate combat at plus two strength and then they also hit the build a boat from the food so we'll go ahead and drop their boat and again, it's going to go in clockwise, um, kind of daisy chaining around. So they've already got one here, so they're not going to do that. So they're going to drop one there, which just further solidifies their control on that island. Um, and then uh, they will get a battle. So they're going to immediately play a battle card face down. And, I, and then it'll go to me, and I can choose whether I want to fight that card or not. Um, <clears throat> so how they choose the favor card that they're battling for is you're going to look at the uh, you're going to look at where their primary boat is located, and if it's located kind of on the top half of the board, they're looking at the top row of the cards, um, in which this island is on the top half of the board. So they are looking at these uh, cards over here, and it's going to be kind of the one they're closest to. Um, so we're going to grab this one since it's an edge card. They still have to grab edge cards. Um, and they're closer to the seed than the end, so they're grabbing this one. This one's going to give them two food and two wood if they win it. Uh, at least it's a lowly sea rune. Um, I don't know what battle strength they have, but whatever it is that they have, it's plus two on top of that. I have an 11, which is really strong, and I've got plenty of steel. But my concern about fighting with this card, even though I think it would totally win, is this is kind of my last card to have island control still exchanges since I don't really have sale but that's also my concern here is if I fight with this card I lose my sale so I really don't want to fight with either of these cards because I want to use both of them for island control um, and maybe this is why I, when I grabbed her I said hey she's got that seven strength like if I don't use her for resources that seven strengths not too shabby I'm gonna fight yeah uh, yeah I'm gonna fight well or I just choose not to fight and I just take a normal action I don't need any resources I really don't need much more out of this card than than to fight with it so I'm gonna fight I'll flip it over oh six to my seven she came through okay so I win that's awesome um, all right so that uh, so F loses so F's fury is going to increase I'm gonna gain the favor card which is gonna give me two food two wood and then they're going to trigger their f ability here 
Oh, which is to add two settlers to the chieftain boats island again. Um, so now we come back down here. Their, uh, their islands here are equal. Uh, oh, yes, somebody in, thank you. Good call in chat. Somebody in chat says, so what about their plus two for battle? That's right. So their um, bonus on their chart gave them plus two. So actually they have an eight strength, not uh, a six. So I lose. So I have to give this back. I have to give my resources back. Go down two wood, go down two. Um, Njord becomes slightly less furious and instead Frigg gets angry uh, and the solo enemy takes this. Wow, okay, total total difference there. Um, and then that means they're also not going to trigger this uh, bonus that we are about to get into, but instead they're gonna gain resources. So they're gonna gain two food and two wood. Uh, and so two food is gonna have them look at the island that they don't have a temple on that has the most settlers. They're gonna cut those settlers in half round down and then they're gonna drop a temple there. And then on their uh, wood track, they're going to move their boat. And so over here clearly is the island that they have the most up here. They got four. So they're gonna sack two of these settlers and they're gonna drop a temple on this island. So let's just do a sanity check real quick. They got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve strength to my six. So that was a perfectly fine move. I'm sure they're very happy with. And then that will um, also reset their food resource to zero. And then because they hit that spot uh, for wood, they are going to be moving this ship down here to this island. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't think all is lost here, actually. I think it's going to be okay. All right, so that was their bonus action, and then uh, they get to play a card as their action now. So we'll flip this over. They're gathering resources again. This is their big hefty gather. And let's see, they do qualify for the bonus, so they really are just going to gather a ton of resources right now. Um, okay, so two, and then, well, one, and then one, and then one. Well, because they're getting, they're getting that bonus. So then they're also, and they're also getting stuff from their mat. So they're definitely going to hit four on their food. And then they get one more of each from their built temple, which means they'll hit their other fight bonus. And then they're still remaining resources so they're hitting they're hitting the end of the track for all their resources so at the top one they're going to look at their islands again and they're going to build a temple again and that one this time is going to be here so they're going to get rid of this build a temple here which is where i thought i was going to be able to steal that rune back from them uh, it's not looking as likely anymore that will reset their food and then their wood is going to um, have their ship sail. It'll sail in a counterclockwise direction uh, times two. And then their wood will reset. So all the resources are going to reset. So we're going to go one, two, and move the boat over here, um, which may seem sorry, which may seem incidental, right? But it's not because if they like move across the dotted lines again, now they're coming over to this island, and maybe they'll leave this island alone, right? So. It's, it's good for, for that. Um, so we'll move this down. And then now they're doing another battle where they're going to draw a card face down. And now they're on the bottom half of the board and they're on the left side of the board. So they're fighting for a, a far more meaningful card. Okay. <clears throat> this is where I think maybe I really do fight for this card because um, I'm losing in the island runes department big time and while they have some favor cards they don't have the best favor cards and i've got good ones and so maybe i can make up for for that with oh man um yes so i'm going to do this card but i'm going to play it as a normal action i'm going to sail three because i do have the end runes i need to qualify so i'll still join this fight but i'm going to do my sail three first and then I qualify for my bonus, which allows me to flip it over and join the fight. So I got to really, really think smart about this sale three. And do I have the food? Yes, I have the food and I have two settlers. So I'm really not going to have to make myself weak. Well, if I draw a settler from anywhere, 
If I draw from here or here, I lose these runes. So I cannot take those settlers. I only can work with these settlers. So if I want the full value of three, I'd pull from there. Okay. This is, uh, let's see. So they've got two strength from this boat, and then six, and then seven, and then eight, and then 10. They have a lot of strength. I am six strength away. But if I add the boat and I knock their boat off, right, that's a four point swing. So then, um, and then if I deploy my settlers and three, it would actually kill one of their settlers and I could take this back. But F is the stronger point value. And F, I think I definitely can because we're really pretty close. The only difference is, is they have two boats. We're tied otherwise. And I would knock one of their boats off, add a boat, and add people. So that definitely is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to sail um, one, two. I'm going to get rid of this boat. Uh, actually, maybe to protect myself, I'm going to sail a little bit farther. Or is one, two. No. Yeah. Okay. I got to do this. So I'll get rid of this boat. Send this over here. Um, and then deploy two settlers only, not three, but two. So I'll go one, two, drop two settlers, but that's enough to kill one of their settlers. And I take back control of that F island and increase that fury again. And then I join the battle because I do have the two end runes. So now we're going to flip this over. They have, and it is a plus two battle for them. So they've got three plus two, so five plus F runes, so six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so they have just enough to beat me in that battle because they have, look how many F runes they have. Um, geez, so they get up to ten, which is just enough to beat me. I do have to spend my steel, and because I die, uh, and I'm an F rune, uh, Njord's Fury increases again, and they get this card and their steel resets to zero, and then they gain a steel from the card and gain two wood from the card, and that was a really big loss. Even though I got the F rune out of that, I really didn't expect to lose the favor card, and now I kind of need a third favor card in order to catch up. Um, okay, so they, I've got five, they got four, so it's their turn, so they're gonna play this, and they're gonna do some more gathering, because. That's what every single card was in the final drafting round, which is gathers. So they're going to go one, two, three, and then they get the extra uh, one extra food from their ship uh, space and then one resource of each type from their temple. Okay, so there's that. They did cross over um, moving the boat across the way and they crossed over building a boat. So we're going to drop a boat. We'll go in order food first because of the order of the track. So we'll drop a boat here, and then they're going to move across the way. And when they move across the way, it's not technically a sail action, right? It's not like a sail times two or anything. So they're not going to deploy any settlers. Um, they're just going to sail across there, which is good for me because I have nothing there practically. Um, so that's fine. That all is okay. That's not the worst. But then they do have this uh, bonus action, which they definitely qualify for, which is to deploy a settler from their boat across the way. So they will drop another settler on this island. Okay, so now my final action of the game. And there's a lot I can do with this card. And I do have the F runes. So I am going to be able to take full advantage of the value of this card. Uh, or I can fight with it. And since I don't have a third favor card, and I do have the steel to fight with it, so it's kind of, it's going to take me a sec. Um, bear with me here, because I can move two settlers and kill a settler. Um, so it would kill this one. I'd move two, right? That, that's not going to be, hmm. no, because they're eight, and they'd be at ten, and then I'd be at six. Yeah, that's not going to do it. Um, but this island, maybe. Maybe this island. If I move two settlers over here and kill a settler, because I have a ship, so that would be six for them, and then I would have four. So that's not, and I don't want to lose the F rune. I don't want to lose the F island. Okay, so I don't think it's there. I think I'm going to have to just fight with it. 
All right, so I'm fighting, and I'm going to fight for the obvious only choice of two runes left. Um, and I've got an 11 strength, so I'm coming pretty strong. They're going to fight me automatically. And they don't get their plus two this time. Uh, and sorry, Brit, one plus N, I don't think it's going to come. Maybe one plus F and you would have done it, but not one plus N. So that's not enough. My 11 is going to win. I'll spend my two steel. I'll win this favor card. I'll gain back to food. I'll gain a wood. And then uh, N, the N Fury will increase. And then they will refer to this card. And they're going to gain a resource of their choice, which will, uh, they'll gain a wood. They'll gain a steel. Not resource of the choice, one of each resource. And then they'll gain uh, food. And that's going to actually trigger their temple build again. But they have temples. Oh, nope, it would be up here. So they would drop this one now. And they would build their fourth temple up here. Uh, and then they do actually also qualify for that uh, fight. But when they... Like, that does kind of change if the... I don't have any cards left. So they do get a fight plus two, but they're going to be fighting against an invader. So they're going to flip that over. It's a three. They're going to, their boat is down here on the bottom half of the board. So they'll go for the only bottom card remaining. Um, they have a battle strength of three plus two. So five, they're going to fight an invader. Uh, the invader has 12. So the invader wins. Uh, so they'll lose uh, their, the C will go up. And then they will not collect this card. It'll go back to where it came from. And then they will look at this. Add one settler to the Chieftain Boats Island. Oh, and then sail five docks. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, towards the closest N island. Interesting. Okay. All right. So um, they're going to drop a settler off here, which is really unfortunate. Because, I mean, that's a big swing right there because... Like that, that we they weren't they didn't have any boots on the ground, but now they have boots on the ground and they have um, the influence. They're gonna take my F rune from me, which is a big point grab that I needed, and then they're gonna move to the N rune and they're gonna essentially try to go clockwise. If they can't, then they take another route and they're gonna end up this way. I'll go this way. Either way, one if they go clockwise here, because I'll cross over. Two is clockwise, three. This gets them there in a clockwise fashion. One, two, three. And so they'll move up here, just throw their piece. Now they're not sailing, so they're not going to deploy. It's not like a sail times five. It's just a special action. So they won't take this, but they do grab this, which interestingly enough, um, they will put on a sail. And then that sail is, an, is, a, is officially a sail. And they are going to sail to a C one because that was the last card they played and that is close right here so they're going to sail across the way and they're going to spend whatever their food already reset to zero so they have no food so even if whatever um, they won't be able to deploy here but they didn't need to this island they have plenty of control over so but and the problem is even when they leave this F island they left it tied and so they took it from me and then just left it tied all right, so that's it. Um, that's, uh, and then, nope, they've got one more card. They've got their final action of the game, um, which is gathering. Okay, and then, oh, it was just two resources. And then the extra food. And then their ship is going to move. I'm going to go here and here. Move, nope, two in a counterclockwise, here and here. And then gain a steal. And then this, they're going to deploy, but there's no, they're, the dotted line they're on does not lead to anything. So they will not uh, do that action. So that is it. And they finished, They, I think if that F rune, if they didn't take that right at the end, I bet that's the difference. But let's, all, let's add it all up and find out. So I've got two to their four. And then they, and then that also that big win they got on that favor card. Um, okay, so let me clear off this. This will, the score track is on the back of this. Okay, let's flip that over. Bring over our score tokens. 
Okay, Njord obviously was the most furious god, followed by Freya. So we're going to count up the F runes first. So F island runes are going to count as six points. So we both get six points for that. So I'll just put both of us on six. We're equal there, and those are accounted for. And then uh, Freya's island runes are five each, so five and ten. So then they're going to jump to 16. And then the end runes, those are going to be worth four the least. So we're each going to grab four, so they're going to jump up to 20. I'm going to go to 10. And then our favor cards, um, in which I only have one more favor than them. That's not that, it's not enough. It's not going to be enough. Um, so, but let's add this all up. So we'll start with Fs again. I have two Fs. And Fs are going to be worth 4, so that's going to be 18 points. So I will move to 18. They have two Fs, unfortunately. So that will also be 8 points for them. They'll move to 28. And then uh, C runes. Again, we're just tied on C runes. So um, I got 6 total, so I will move to 24. And they have 6 total, so they will move to 34. Right there and then the end runes um, which they have one and I have two so they'll gain two more points and I'll gain four more points so the final score is going to be me 28 and them 36 so um, pretty close so if if I had not lost this F rune that would have been the whole difference because it would have been a, a 12 point swing, right? Six more points. Um, I would have finished at 34 and they would have finished at 30. And that would have been really, really tight. But because they came through and and dropped off a settler on that island in the last moment, uh, that's what they needed to win. So um, there you go, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching the solo playthrough. Check us out um, on Kickstarter. Time is running out. There's not a lot of time left. Um, appreciate everybody's support on the Kickstarter. And we look forward to making this game. Um, and all right, we'll see you guys in the comments. Everybody take care. Bye-bye.